Uh, no, I don't. I have no idea. Not at all? Not a clue? Um, nope. <laughs> Boring movies and like editing songs and stuff like that. Um, well, no, not really. I know that it has something to do with music and um, technology. So maybe like making music on technology? I personally don't. I think it might be something to do with um, music and cords and wires and something to go with that, like something like electronic music maybe, but not sure. Um, kind of. I know that it's like not really music with words like you would normally think. It's like background music and like, weren't were like, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, it's just technologically musical. I have a little bit of an understanding of music technology. I'm pretty sure that it has to do with like putting music together with technology to use it in like TV shows and movies and stuff like that. Music technology is a really big blanket term um, and depending where you go it means different things. For some it can be an emphasis on the music, for others it can be an emphasis on the technology. For us, it's a means to an end. So what that means is we use the two technology and focus on the technology rather than the theory or the performance of music. Music technology is a field that is um, new, very new in many ways, and is still evolving and something that is uh, very diverse. And the first thing I think about is audio engineering. So somebody could be using technology to, um, to help uh, record people, you know, who might not be able to do that themselves. Uh, at Capitol, I direct a group called the MIDI Band. So it's all electronic instruments, and we have a drum kit that can, of course, play drums, but it can play piano and guitar and a whole bunch of fun different sounds. We have a guitar that can play guitar sounds and drums and piano and a whole bunch of fun different sounds. So with a group like that, we're using the, te the technology to enhance the performance side of things. So. Um, that for me is a, is a really big part of what music technology is. And then you start to think about the technology itself and how a user could help realize the performer's creative vision, whatever the case may be. So, so that might be in studio production where you're in a, a, as an audio engineer in a recording studio and then you are helping make the band sound as good as they possibly can. So. Um, then you get into the composition side of things where you are an actual you know, user of the technology, um, using the technology like I have back here on the screen to actually um, be creative and perhaps then the outlet for that is either music for yourself, music for an audience, or music for a different medium like video, television, video games, and film, that sort of thing. Um, I think maybe it would help to be able to maybe know how to play an instrument or just be it, have a love for music. But I don't think it's necessary that you have to be like a really good musician or anything. But I think if you just have that passion that you can do it, they'll teach you what you need to know. I feel like this is a trick question, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say you have to be like very intelligent with it. Um, probably not, because I mean, if you're going to major in it, you'll probably learn a lot about it. First of all, I think what's really important is to have a passion for anything that you do. Music technology is such a broad category, and there are so many opportunities in this field of production. Um, if you're going to fix guitars, which is part of music technology. Um, understanding guitars, understanding how to play guitar is probably pretty darn important. Um, if you're going to record orchestras, understanding how to read scores and that sort of thing is, is pretty important. If you, though, are interested in um, writing software for music, for music technology-based applications, then perhaps your understanding of music isn't as critical but of course, knowledge of computer science, computer programming is gonna be really important. 
So there are varying degrees of background that are important in this area, but I think it's um, solely going to depend on the, the niche of music technology that you're going to pursue. Um, if it's going to be a forward-facing um, music-related endeavor, like recording an orchestra, then having background in music is huge. If it's maybe more of the back-end side of things, then perhaps it's not as critical. We put everyone in, into our intro class. We've never had anyone test out of it. And we get everyone on a level playing field, um, which is really important. And then, like, a, I mean, I think this is unique to our program, is that we stair-step everyone up. So with that foundational knowledge, you got to learn the terminology, you have to learn the vocabulary. Within that, uh, we can we can manipulate that. So the access to different recording studios becomes available, the access to ni nicer microphones, to take gear off campus to do sound capturing um, or for films and things like that, all comes with that after you've had that foundational knowledge. It definitely helps, and it helped me a lot to have that musical background when I got here. Um, I think it really depends on how involved you want to be in an instrument. So if you want to be a vocalist or an instrumentalist of some sort and you're going to study it at a college level, you definitely will want to have a musical background before you come to college. Um, that's not to say if you wanted to learn some music technology things that you couldn't do it though. Um, when you come in as a music technology major, you have the choice of whether or not you want to study an instrument or voice or not. So if you decide not to, you can definitely learn the technical skills. Um, associated with the music technology major, but you might have some trouble with the artistic side of it if you haven't ever been in that mindset before. We start right from square one, right when the students walk in the door for their first class. Students have hands-on access. Because of the facilities that we have, they can walk right into a space like this and start creating. And we just make stuff, you know, we just make a lot of stuff uh, over the four years. But, you know, we say it kind of lightheartedly, but making stuff is a student's portfolio. It's your resume. So, you know, you're spending these four years creating and those creations and doing the very best that you can on those are your calling card. It's your portfolio to show potential employers. So all of the projects that we do, we, we don't just have these tiny little slices of projects that we want students to do. We have to make and create entire projects. If you're thinking of tracking a band, you know, you're gonna record a band, you're gonna blend all of the uh, various elements of that band together, and then you're gonna create a final project, so. In addition to a, a hands-on curriculum, our strengths are connecting students with professionals. Um, between myself and my colleagues and being so close to Columbus, we have so many great community partners where we're able to take students out on field trips to various areas. We have a requirement of an internship where our students are working for credit out in the field. And that connection is imperative because we haven't done our job if a student hasn't built their network while they're in school because once they graduate, it's almost too late. You know, so we want them to network and build a community so that way when they graduate, they're ready to start asking for, for jobs because this is the type of industry that's built on networks. If you, uh, you're not going to walk, you know, down the street and say, hey, a recording studio and knock on the door and hey, I've got a degree uh, in engineering, you know, they might appreciate that you went to school for, for audio production, but if they don't know you and understand you know, that you're gonna be um, an asset to their, their company, then they'll look the other way. So it's important to us to connect students with professionals so that way they're ready to go when they graduate. Like a DJ or like score <laughs> movies. I think I'm a music teacher. <laughs> oh yeah, or you could be a singer yourself, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. Um, maybe a producer or something. Do you know anything else? Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe like a composer. Uh, any person working for a record label, maybe. Well, they could make music. 
With technology? Oh, like in the movies? Like make the music that goes in the back of the movies? The first thing that would come to my mind uh, would be working sound for like concerts, for theaters actually might be a big thing, and just being kind of a sound technician, um, again, at like a theater or a concert venue. Uh, but I'm sure they're also needed in TV, radio, uh, and a lot of like private studio. What's exciting about right now and where we are and the moment you're capturing this video is that there are established jobs in this field that we know about, right? Radio stations exist, TV stations exist, um, recording studios exist. Artists have recorded music forever since it's been available, not because they thought they were gonna make money on it, right? I mean, at the height of CD sales, at the pinnacle in the mid 90s, when CDs were, you know, how everyone was making their money, still less than 10% of artists broke even. So that's never been a foundation reason, right? But then you start thinking, well, then there's SoundCloud. There's the, uh, there are all sorts of ways that I can get my music in other people's hands. The uh, explosion of podcasts, right? They all have music beds that go with that. The explosion of original TV content has never been greater, right? They all have music affiliated with it, which means there's not only music composition, there's the mixing part, there's the uh, licensing part, who's getting paid for that, the accounting for that. Then there's the mixing within the TV program, right? Then you have syndication and all those things that can possibly happen with that, let alone Blu-ray, DVD, Netflix, and things like that. Then you get into things like the Oculus Rift and surround audio. Then you think about the gaming industry, which is not gonna get any smaller. And then you think, not only is it now, you know, a couple people playing video games in a basement, we're now booking out Staples Arena in Los Angeles and selling it out for e-gaming explosions, right? There's three production trucks that show up for that. There's a US feed and there's an international feed and a Japanese feed, right? Of all the people affiliated with that, you have sports audio. So you have in Columbus, we have crew and the Blue Jackets and then OSU is part of the Big Ten Network. Tons of free TV content. Those are the things that we can think about but you know you're thinking you know uh youtube is what at this point 11 years old right so you know uh uber and things like that aren't even five years old so there are jobs that we're developing and thinking and training for that don't even exist that we 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 are trying to figure out what they are and we are aware of where things are going but you know who knew that um you know you could make funding uh money being a crowdfunding video specialist just to help people make videos that would help them get crowdfunding through Kickstarter. I mean, that's a job, lots of jobs, right? So there's an, an array of where to go with this. So we have um, a couple students that were graduating that right when I came into Capital where they were kind of wrapping up. Um, couple of those uh, have then landed some really interesting gigs and in that they connected with an artist. Now they're her backing band and one of the students is running for a house for her and they tour all over. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing that, that I get to kind of watch through social media, you know, when they're on tour and playing and pictures on stage and stuff. And that's intermittent. So they have to work on, again, it's that multiple revenue streams. But when that's happening, you know, they're in the tour bus and it's a, it's a really neat life. Um, we have another student uh, that is took uh, their senior project, which was a really cool, re beautifully shot, really well recorded video series um, that they were creating here as a senior project. And then they found a sponsor in Columbus to host that and then have kind of created a company around that. So they do regular um, uh, shoots at a different location and have really grown that, thought about the brand and it still looks beautiful, it sounds amazing, and it's really fun to kind of watch them do that. We had a lot of graduates that have gone on to record, uh, create their own music that is being used then in you know, nationally televised commercials. We just recently had a student that graduated and wrote the, uh, the music bed for the Secret Life Pets trailer. So using technology and composition skills, that person put that together to make their career. We have a former graduate that uh, went through our program, was always in the recording studio, always composing, got really interested in video and film while he was here as well, and 
he decided he wanted to be a, what you could call a freelance audio engineer. Uh, but I would categorize him as a freelance entrepreneur. In other words, he's, had, he's dabbling in quite a few things. And he started his own business. And this is a, it's an interesting business. He um, helps uh, men or women propose to their loved ones, like their fiancés. <laughs> right? Sorry. <laughs> so he meets with them and they, he has a team and they, they hide out more or less. It's like kind of this cool little private thing, like a uh, spy thing, right? They're getting in barrels and little tiny cameras and recording audio all, all on the, all on the, the quiet. And, um, and he's actually built this business because then he's an entrepreneur. He goes to all of the, like the wedding shows, like the gowns, the, you know, all of that stuff, right? So he's built, built a really big business. Mm -hmm. But on the side then, he's also doing composition for national uh, organizations and, and companies and that sort of thing. So that's just a, a, a great <laughs> success story. Um, we've had students that uh, are doing some really amazing things in the live sound arena. Um, in particular, I had a student that had just got back from touring with a heavy metal band in Japan. Um, so, you know, that ability to travel and get connected. Um, and again, it's all just about building your network. So, students that are working uh, locally at audio uh, visual companies, producing uh, commercials, doing live events, um, just a lot of really neat opportunities. And they're all extremely happy with their quality of life. And you know what, where they've landed, um, because again they're they're kind of pa they're passionate about what they're doing. So um, at the end of the day, that's that's the most exciting thing for me is that <laughs> these students are leaving and they're they're just getting some really really cool jobs. Mm -hmm.